Hey guys, it's Dana. I love learning a good tip or technique or something that makes my sewing a little bit better or a little bit easier. So today I'm gonna to show you how to sew a beautifully polished finished neckline. Today we're gonna to finish off the neckline on a woman's top using a bias strip of fabric. And you might be thinking that all I did was turn the fabric under and sew it in place. But actually that doesn't work very well because this is on a curve, it doesn't lay very flat. So let me show you on this top, you can see a little bit better because I have sewn a collar onto this one. You can see now that there is actually a separate piece of fabric sewn right here. And that just makes it lay really smooth and it looks really awesome. When I first learned to sew, I would sew my necklines with a facing, which is a similar concept. You would take a piece of fabric that was cut the same shape as your neckline, one or two inches wide, sew it around the neckline, and then it tucks right under into your top or dress. It's a great technique, but sometimes it can feel a little bulky or it can be harder to press, which is why I love to use this bias finish here. So let's do it. For this project, I am using my summer day top pattern, which you can find on my site, go to madeeveryday.com. And you don't have to use my pattern, you can use any top dress pattern that you have, the same technique will apply. I've already cut out my front and my back of my top over here, so we're gonna set those aside for a minute and talk about this neckline binding. Now, if you look at your fabric, you can cut your fabric on the grain line, which runs parallel and perpendicular to the selvage here. And you can see when we do that, I've cut a strip here. It doesn't really have a lot of give or stretch to it, which means it's not going to curve very nicely around my neck. Now, if we cut our fabric instead on a bias, which is a 45 degree angle with your grain line, then if I hold this one up, you can see that it does have just a little bit of give to it, which is gonna help it lay nicely and mold around the curve of our neckline. So grab my bias strip pattern pieces right here. This one's for my neckline. And like I said, I'm gonna place it on the bias. And you can look on your pattern piece. It says right here, grain, and it has an arrow. That means that little piece right there needs to go with the direction of the grain. And then I have one here for my cap sleeves as well to go around the armholes. And if you are not using this pattern, you just wanna make sure you cut a bias strip that is one inch wide. Okay, now what I would do is trace around these with my fabric marker, cut them out. You could use a rotary cutter and a mat as well, whatever works for you. And when I'm done, I have my little strips over here, my neckline, my armholes, my top. Okay, I think we're ready to put this together. I've started the basic construction on my top by sewing the two shoulder seams together using a 3 8 inch seam allowance, and I've pressed those seams to the back. Now I've also sewn my bias strip together with a 3 8 inch seam allowance and pressed that seam open. Now we're ready to put the whole thing together. Okay, now open up your top, lay it flat, and we're going to pin right sides of your binding strip with right sides of the neckline. Start with the seam and place it in the middle back of your top. And I'm gonna pin these together with right sides of the fabric together. And then I'm just gonna work my way around slowly around the neckline, making sure that everything is pinned in place. Now, as you go around the neckline, because it's a curve, it might not feel like it's laying super flat right now. And it's important that you don't want to stretch your bias strip too much, because I know that might feel, see like right here, it looks like it's bunching a little bit. Just kind of ease it into place. Because even though it feels like you want to stretch it to fit, that actually will make your strip too long and will lay kind of funky. So, here we go. Okay, there's my last pin. And you can see, as I was talking about, it's kind of not curved perfectly yet, but as we sew it and do the rest of our technique, it's gonna lay nicely. So let's go to our sewing machine and sew this first step in place. Something I really love about my Baby Lock Brilliant Machine is that you can take this off right here, slides right off. And this is just the toolbox that holds my different bobbins and things like that. So I can set that aside. And what I'm left with is called a free arm. And it's awesome when you're sewing an opening like this, because you can come right over here and just lay it really flat like that. Okay, so come into place here, and we are going to sew with a quarter inch seam allowance. So, 
There we go. Okay, forward and back stitch. And then just go right around. You wanna kind of be precise in this part and go slowly. So if you need to adjust your speed control, I can do that right over here. Makes it really easy. As I'm getting to my pins, I'm removing them so it can help the fabric relax around that curve right there. Otherwise you might get a little pucker in your pin, under your pin. Make sure you're not stretching the neckline as you go. Just methodically feed it through and help guide it around that curve. Okay, I've made it all the way around. Do forward and back stitch. Cut your thread. I love this little cutting feature on my baby lock. And now we're gonna go to our iron. Place your top on your ironing board and we're gonna press around this neckline here. Now you want your seam allowance to be sticking out into the neckline hole like that. And then we're going to fold this over and press all the way around so that we're pressing those two parts together there. Try to go slow here and make sure that it all looks really nice. This is a really polished looking part of your top that will show, so you want it to look really good. And you can see as I'm doing this, it might look a little wavy. That's, that's normal for right now. Okay, now flip this whole thing over so the right side of the fabric is down. We're not done pressing yet. And this is kind of the really cool part of it. <laughs> okay, take this edge here, and we're gonna fold that up so that it meets the stitch line. Right like that. And you can see that what's happening now is that it is curving really nicely around there, which is why we cut it on the bias. I'm gonna press that in place. I'm gonna do this all the way around the neckline. Okay, I'm done pressing this. And don't worry if it's not staying in place, that will happen in the next step. I'm gonna turn this over one more time so that a tiny bit of the right side of our fabric is showing. It just rolls over just a little bit. This ensures that you can't see the neckline binding when you're wearing it so that all you see is the beautiful outside fabric. Okay, we're gonna press that in place all the way around. The great thing here is that you're enclosing that raw seam line of the neckline inside your binding here. I love that. It just looks very polished, professional, fantastic. People are gonna look at your top and say, where did you buy that? Okay, I'm done pressing. Let's pin this all in place. This will help to keep it in place as we sew. Okay, I'm gonna pin this all the way around and then let's go back to our sewing machine. You wanna use a bobbin thread here that's going to blend with your fabric. So I'm using navy blue. Switch that out. And we're going to sew just a smidgen away from this folded edge of the neckline here. Okay. In fact, if it helps, you could line it up with your presser foot and then shift your needle over a little bit to get it right where you want it. Okay. Okay, do a little forward and back stitch. And then carefully sew around. And like I pointed out, I'm using my presser foot right here along this side of my neckline so that it's totally even all the way around. And with my left hand, I'm kind of pulling this fabric, not stretching it, but just pulling it so that around that curve, nothing's bunched up inside. Okay, I'm back around to my beginning here. A little back stitch. And now, cut my threads. Let's go to our iron one more time. Okay, now after sewing, the neckline might still look a little bit wavy, but that's why we're gonna press one final time. 
And that's important with all of your sewing projects. I know that I'm always saying that, but pressing your projects really gives it that polished look. So take the time to always do that. If you wanna use a little steam, that would be great. And there we go. That looks really awesome and beautiful. Good job sewing your neckline. Okay, now I'm gonna finish sewing my shirt. I'm gonna sew the side seams. Then I'm gonna sew the armholes with the bias strip, just like we did the neckline. And then I'm gonna finish off the hem. Okay, there we go, we're all done. Oh man, I am super excited to wear this. Fun fabric, fun shirt pattern, fun sewing project. For more ideas and tutorials, you can check out my website, madeeveryday.com. And for all of your sewing machine needs, go to babylock.com where it's all for the love of sewing. Okay, have fun with your projects. Bye.